Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. This is part four of the video series for Shaper Cutter Overview. And in this one, I'm going to cover some of my favorite cutters and most used cutters, and that is the adjustable groover. And uh, I've developed some uh, opinions on these over the years. And I am not associated with any particular brand. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I, I have developed a number of preferences for different uh, types of cutters, not necessarily brands, over the last 20 years or so. And I find these are the most used cutters that I have in my shop. I mostly build furniture, uh, jewelry boxes, small boxes, and cabinetry at times. And uh, so that has geared me toward a particular size range. If I was doing more construction type structural applications, I might have a different uh, set of recommendations, but I'm going to gear this toward people who may just be getting started out in the shaper. So without further ado, let's get down and talk about some cutters. Okay, these are my first three adjustable groovers that I purchased. These, with these three cutters, I can cover about 90% of all my shop needs from an adjustable groover perspective. For me, I primarily build uh, boxes, furniture, and cabinets. And I found that these cover most of what I need to do. Now, starting with here, this is a Loico. Uh, this is what's called a thin adjustable groover. And you can tell a thin adjustable groover by the uh, shape of the turnover knives. They look like that. And all these groovers will have scribing or scoring knives as well, and they're typically uh, square. And with each scribing knife, you will have four points. These are what leaves the clean face on either your groove wall or tenon face. The parts that wear on these, I've never had to turn any of these turning knives on any of my groovers in 20 years. Uh, the scribing knives, that's the part, the points of the part that wear. And what you'll first see them is a little dog ear. These, will, these points will start rounding over depending upon the material you're putting it through. Uh, this uh, is a Garniga uh, branded Laguna Tools. And this was my very first cutter head. Pretty much same construction, two piece. Except these, you can oppose the faces and make a tenon. I don't know how well that's going to show on camera between these two scribing knives. It looks like I can do a, it's like somewhere between a four and five millimeter uh, uh, width tenon. And I did a video on this one probably 10 years ago, uh, how I use that with these uh, spacers. You use the spacers to adjust the groove width. And you also use the spacers for these to adjust the tenon width. The larger the diameter of the groover, the greater depth groove and the greater, uh, long, greater length tenon you can get out of them. So one of the things I like to do is right after I get a, a, um, an adjustable groover, I'll take a digital caliper and a Sharpie and measure the thickness of each shim to the nearest tenth of a millimeter and mark on there the thickness with, uh, with the Sharpie. And the reason I like to mark them is because when I'm setting something up, if I know that this starts at eight millimeter width with no shims, and I know I can go all the way up to 15, if I wanted a, a 10 millimeter groove, I would just come in here and say, all right, there's a, a one millimeter um, groove here that gets me up to nine. So then I go find another one. And if I add that, then that gets me to a 10 millimeter groove width. Now tenons, the setup's a little different. You have to use different configuration shims because you're starting at whatever the minimum tenon width and then growing out from there. Now this was an 8 to 15 and a half and then this one is a 12 and a half to 24 and obviously they're all different diameters. 
Uh, but uh, this one, uh, this one is a Garniga purchased from Laguna. The most annoying thing about this is the pins. And the reason the pins are annoying here is because when the when there's no shims, or even when there's some shims installed, these pins stick out beyond the face of the uh, cutter head. And this is a spacer off my spindle, and it will not fit between the two pins. So in the past, what I used to do was take the extra shims I had and stack them up. And sometimes you're up here and it's got, you know, you're using thin shims just to, just to fill the space. And it became kind of a, annoying to me. So one of the solutions around that is to, uh, I had a friend turn this on a, has a metal lathe and turn me a custom spacer that allows me to clear the pins. You, you can also pull the pins. Now I've tried to pull the pins on this cutter head and I was, they wouldn't budge. I did not want to apply heat to it. I don't, didn't want to risk damaging the cutter or the pen and make it, making the whole thing unusable. Whereas right now it's just kind of a minor nuisance on that. But one of the things I would suggest if I were to, if I knew then what I know now for these type cutters with the standard adjustable groovers, I try to get them all the same diameter and that will allow you to stack them on your spindle and make multiple cuts for say finger joints uh, on the, while they're mounted on the spindle all in one pass. Uh, I like to make green and green style furniture and one of the things with the uh, drawers with the uh, protruding fingers that come out the front, uh, that's perfect for that. And obviously I couldn't do that with these cutters being different diameters. If I knew then what I know now, I would do something different. One of the things I might suggest, if you're looking to get quality tooling at minimal cost, is a three-piece adjustable groover. And the three-piece adjustable groover, the range, adjustable range on this is between four to 15 and a half millimeter wide. So from a standpoint of adjustable groove width, this single cutter covers the full range of both of these. Now what this cutter is, it, it's, it's got three pieces. It gives, to get that full range, you pull out this, I guess you'd call it a supplementary cutter. Some cutter heads, you might actually be able to buy these two pieces together and this, was, this one is an extra, but a mana, they come together as a set. And this is the thin adjustable groover. See the turnover knives are the same as the, uh, this. And for the supplementary cutter, the turnover knives are in essence the same as this. So what this one cutter does, it enables you to get from a, a groove width from anywhere from four to 15 and a half millimeters. And this one, uh, this one's a little more, I won't say hard. I'll say you have to apply your mind because you, you know, when you're shooting for a particular width, you want to balance the shims to get that width on both the here and here. Uh, try to get that as balanced as you can. Now, this particular cutter head came with uh, very short stubby roll pins. They were just a nuisance uh, from a setup standpoint. I just eventually pulled them out. I got tired of dealing with it uh, because their you know, roll pins weren't the ideal situation for this cutter and they came out easily. And uh, if you buy this, this is an Amana. If you buy this new now, you will, um, it won't even have pins, or at least a friend of mine purchased one of these uh, probably within the last year or so, and uh, his did not have pins. All right, so that covers the, the groove width for these two. What about the full range here? 
The other cutter I might suggest is going a, a 15 to 30 millimeter adjustable groover. This will cover all the tenoning needs that I would have for both of these cutters. Give me greater range. This one I think I can do, uh, if I pull, put this together, it looks like it's Looks like it's somewhere between those two scribing knives, about four millimeters between them, because the boss is on this. Uh, this is a Zuani, and this one will give me an adjustable range with the shims between 15 millimeters and 30, up to 30 millimeters. So for these two cutters alone, cost of two cutters, I can cover the full range of those, cover the gap between these two, and eliminate the overlap between these two and go beyond. But I will say that I, you know, I, I, per, I chose poorly on the range here. I should have chosen a 15 to 30 millimeter as opposed to 12 and a half to 24. But hindsight's 2020. 20. And anyway, from the standpoint of, of that, if I knew then what I knew now, I would, I would choose to go this route and it would have saved me more money. And uh, also uh, try to at least shoot for these to get the same diameter cutter. And if you do finger joints or want to do finger joints um, for drawers, uh, that's, uh, I think that's a good choice. So anyway, that's, uh, I think I'll probably, probably just leave it at that. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, I probably use adjustable groovers more than I do any other shaper cutter. And I just find them incredibly useful and versatile. Uh, I've gotten pretty much to the point, at least from a furniture and jewelry box standpoint, I do all my drawers with adjustable groovers. There's, there's no other means of joinery. Let's see if I can pull out, pull out a drawer here. This is one of those examples. Uh, I've got rebates in the drawer front and in the drawer side. I use the uh, thin adjustable groover for the uh, panel on the bottom. And I also use a, the 8 to 15 for an adjustable groover for the uh, uh, grooves that, that ride on the drawer runners. So uh, I learned through observing people at, the, uh, at various art walks and shows that I've been to and presented at is that nobody really cares about your dovetails as much as we all love them as woodworkers. Uh, Non-woodworkers don't care. They care about price and looks. And unless they're looking specifically for dovetails, uh, you can actually reduce your cost by uh, simplifying your drawer construction. I was able to significantly reduce my price just, just changing my drawer construction method to this. And I ended up using um, uh, the pins on this are actually 4 millimeter diameter pins. And where do you get 4 millimeter diameter pins? I would suggest the grocery store. Go buy bamboo skewers. And you'll find some a little above four millimeter, some right at, some a little thinner. Uh, but these things are tough and they have built-in reliefs for, for glue relief so you don't get um, a hydraulic lock when you're driving these pins in place. But anyway, I found these, these are pretty tough and I have yet to see a drawer failure on anything that I've, I've built this way. Everything's been tight. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you're just getting started, I hope you have found this helpful. And if you've uh, had more experience and reached the same or even different conclusions, I'd love to hear about that in the comments too. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.